Welcome to Looking at Legal Stuff. Today we have nine hearings with a couple who are back in court just six weeks after signing their final parenting plan because dad wants to change the custody arrangements after finding out that newly sober mom is allegedly being evicted, has a man in active addiction living in her garage who has become physical with the children, and he has concerns that mom is using again. Mom tells a long rambly tale about the chaos in the home and states that she's not being evicted, she's actually moving out due to the toxicity of the neighbors and the drug house next door, and claims that there was no violence from her new friend, he was just helping her discipline her disrespectful child. Let's see what the judge thinks of this. All right, um, Zimmerman and Zimmerman. That's 23300021408. I'm here, ma'am. Good I was going to say afternoon, but I guess it's still morning. Good morning. Here as well. All right. Thank you, folks. I do have a boatload of paperwork here. Looks like um, the final paperwork uh, in this matter. And it is on for today for me to enter these orders. Are there any questions or concerns at this point about these orders? Um, one question I do have is, uh, Desiree, I'm sorry, Mrs. Zimmerman and I, uh, both have come to the agreement on no support. Um, I don't know how that works in, in your honor's eyes or, uh, yeah, how that, how that works out. Um, but we just kind of want to move forward in our lives. So in the, in the plan is a, uh, it looks like it's a 50, 50 plan. Yes, ma'am. And there's no, not a significant difference, excuse me, no significant, real significant difference in income. And is there, it looks like there's a 50-50 share of any additional expenses. Is that correct? Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, a, there's a 60-40, I guess, for uninsured medical expenses. But otherwise, uh, it looks like it's equal proportionate share. Uh, the child's not receiving any um, TANF or other state benefits at this point. Uh, as far as I'm aware of, they just received food stamps, okay. uh, SNAP benefit. Uh, Ms. Zimmerman, any um is that is that accurate? There's no TANF benefits at this point. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to sign these uh, these documents. I'll get them to the clerk as soon as we're done this morning. Um, you can probably get copies of these by tomorrow afternoon from the clerk's office if you wish to have copies. Um, probably no later than Thursday, but you should be able to get them tomorrow afternoon. Um, I will get them filed with. The clerk as soon as I'm done with the docket this morning. Thank okay. you, Your Honor. All right. Good luck to you both. Your Honor, I'm sorry. I stepped away from one. I was just informed that there may be a possibility that um, one of the children or the child involved is on TANF benefits. Um, can I confirm whether that is accurate? Sure. They both indicated neither, none of the children are on TANF. I asked. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. I mean, and I don't, unless you have, do you have um, anything that says otherwise? I'm, Hold on, I'm, my assistant just let me know. Um, she is checking into that. Your Honor, she's she's double checking. Um, I'm sorry, Your Honor, um, we're not able to confirm. Um, so at this time, I will just be stepping away. I apologize for the interrupt. No, that's okay. All right, I um, will finish signing these orders. Uh, I guess just know that if there is information that one of the child is on state benefits, there could be, uh, the state can uh, raise the issue of child support, bring that back before the court, but you would get communication from them uh, as part of that. Understood. So, uh, but I'm, I'm signing off on all your orders at this point. All right, well, I appreciate Good luck to you both. Time. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, number six on my docket, Desiree Zimmerman. I see you there online. And do I have Chris Zimmerman? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. So I did 
this file to 233002408. This is a motion filed by Mr. Zimmerman uh, for me to find that there's adequate to move on to a hearing on a potential new proposed parenting plan. Um, I'll hear briefly first from you, Mr. Zimmerman, and then from uh, Ms. Zimmerman. Let me just first clarify, Ms. Zimmerman, I did receive your response and objection to the petition to change the parenting plan or to find adequate cause. Um, and so I'll have Mr. Zimmerman go first since it's his motion, and then I'll come to you to let me know your position, okay? Okay, go ahead, Mr. Zimmerman. So um, when I filed the paperwork, uh, um, I also read very carefully that there could be no allegations used prior to the original signing of the original order. So these are all um, instances or instigation or incidents that happened um, after the signing of the parenting plan. And uh, I didn't have time to do anything, but there was another incident that happened uh, the night before last where somebody threatened to beat my, quote, beat my daughter's ass, break her cell phone in half, and take things from her that didn't belong to him. This was a gentleman who is staying in Miss Zimmerman's garage. Um, uh, from my understanding and what I've uh, been told by several people is that this person is an active addiction. Um, there was an incident and, and Ms. Zimmerman got into a confrontation and this gentleman stepped in and started overstepping his boundaries and threatening my daughter, sorry, our daughter. Um, it's been an ongoing situation. I've been received phone calls from Child Protective Services. I had to go in and speak with them. Um, I have also re uh, received text messages from Desiree's uh, oldest daughter, uh, Megan, um, about the situations that have unfolded, um, as well as our own daughter, Sarah Zimmerman. Um, it's just been a constant situation um, of poor parenting choices. And this is all stuff that has been happening since the original signing of the original order. And so I'm really concerned about the safety and well being of the children. Um, instability. Um, I do know that she has gotten employment, which is very good. That's awesome. I am very happy for that. Um, however, I am really still concerned about the safety of the people that are allowed to be around our children, and it is very concerning for me. Okay. Help me understand the timeline a little more, because to find adequate cause, I have to find that things have changed, and I heard what you said about a, a recent incident. Um, you know, this is a situation where the parenting plan between the two of you was finalized on September 6 of 2023. And then you filed your adequate cause request um, on September 22 of 2023. Um, so what what happened in that interim period that you believe changed? Um, I do know that um, Ms. Zimmerman has informed me that she had served her landlord with a um, notice to vacate the premises, but I was informed by her landlord that she was served with eviction papers um, or to, to leave the premises due to drug activity, um, uh, traffic, and loud parties and kids all night stomping around. The neighbors have reported to her landlord, as well as informed me of every incident that's happened. Um, there's the uh, the uh, attack on Sarah, where she was drugged to the ground by her hair and drug out the door. And Desiree's excuse for that was that the police told her that that was okay to do it. Um, there's the uh, suspicion that Desiree was still using. Um, from not just myself, but a bunch of other people, including one of the children. Um, these are all things that have happened since that day. So these, I mean, it's, it was like, I got flooded. My inbox was flooded. Um, it's just, it's very um, concerning. <laughs> 
So I don't mean, it's what you mean by the timeline or what, what, what's going on. That's, that's the things that I've received since the signing and, and agreement on the uh, divorce papers. And so the eviction or moving out notice, was that after September 6th? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, I was notified about it. Yes. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. Let me go to you, Ms. Zimmerman. I have read your response. Um, what would you like the court to know? We can't hear you. I don't know if your audio is connected. Oh, there. We, we're hearing something. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we can. Oh, my gosh. So sorry about that. I'm not used to using my friend's laptop. <laughs> Um, so your honor, um, this has been a very difficult divorce and separation. Um, in the beginning, we tried to do things as, um, just roommates and then things became very physical. Um, and when I asked him to leave, he refused. So I ended up grabbing what I could and living out of my car for months while still paying the rent and bills while he was not working. Um, I bring that up because it's just been very, very, very difficult for the kids. They've been through a lot. Um, eventually I was able to get back in the home and had him removed. Um, and when I first returned back in the home, um, it was very chaotic. The kids had control over the home from all of the times that they were left to fend for themselves. And I did at first parent out of guilt um, because of everything that they had been through as children, um, tried to be understanding, but, but with the help and guidance of my mental health counselor and my sponsor at NA, uh, I began to um, take control over the home and uh, put my foot down and stick to my boundaries and rules with my children. And because of that, my oldest daughter, my 16 year old has been on the run. Um, I am trying to not involve the people who have wrote up statements because of backlash um, and because of how they are connected to Chris and myself uh, in the long run. Gonna, yeah, so hold on, ma'am. I'm going to try and help right. you in a little bit. So um, I understand also your case has been going on for a bit of time um, and you guys thought you had resolution and now we're back here. Yes, I'm getting I, to it. <laughs> I understand that, but I, well, that's what we need to focus on. The only thing in front of me is, has something changed since September 6th that would warrant me revisiting the parenting plan. So that's my question for you is you, you have filed a response to the main allegations are eviction, living conditions for your children, drug usage around the children. So what can you tell me about those primary issues? Um, with the homelessness, at first the landlord did give me a 10 day comply or vacate because I was being accused of um, several people living in the garage and in my response to that was a video that I sent to her that the garage was empty um, and she said that, that was more than enough evidence and I informed her then that I was actively looking for a place to live because of the toxicity of the neighbors around me including the ones Okay, next so gonna, I'm going to try okay. to phone you in here, ma'am. I so have let, me, let me, let me help you understand a little bit. We're not here on a full-blown trial of the facts. This is a very quick fact finding type of discussion where I decide, have we even, is there a threshold showing for adequate cause? And then we move on to an actual hearing on what a parenting plan should look like if I were to grant the adequate cause. So let me ask you a couple pointed questions. Thank you. One is, do you have a home you're living in now? Yes. Were you were you evicted since September 6th? 
I have my um, a copy of my letter that I gave to the landlord stating I'd be out by the end of the month. Okay. Where are you going at the end of the month? I am waiting to hear back on five different places that I've applied for and still actively searching. I just got my housing amount printed from HUD. Um, and worst case scenario is I will be staying temporarily at the community house um, because uh, the safety of my children, because of how toxic the neighbors are there, including the drug house next door. If you, if I'm not hearing your case right now, please mute. Mr. Scrimshire, you're not no. muted. I'm sorry. Um, so, Ms. Zimmerman, so, so it, by the end of the month, you're not sure where you and the children will be living. And right now your only option is community health. It's not my only option. I'm waiting to hear back on a few different places. They're going through applications. Okay. But worst case scenario, living at a homeless shelter has nothing to do or would, would it disqualify me as a good parent? That's not the question. The question okay. is not whether you are disqualified as a good parent. The question is, um, has there been a substantial change in circumstances since you guys entered the parenting plan where the court would want to revisit what that parenting plan should look like. So not a question of you, your fitness as a parent related to your housing. There is a question about drug usage around the children and perhaps someone who may live with you or live near you that hasn't been a bit unkind to a child. What can you tell me about that? Um, I do have a friend staying with me temporarily. Um, I know him from Narcotics Anonymous. Uh, he did stand up for me and help correct my child. He did not overstep. She was being very disrespectful. I had already taken my sleeping meds for the night when the toilet over flooded and I was trying to clean it up. I was there present. Him and I have already had a discussion about that. I do know that the children do do a lot of back and forth. Um, and I try my best to uh, have an open communication with him and take that into consideration. I have on my phone our daughter letting me know uh, sending me a picture of her holding his girlfriend's baby saying I'm late and this was at 1230 yesterday and I might get a ride and dad officially don't got time for me no more. He's making me learn to use my alarm and I'll be late because of it. I'm tired and exhausted and Kenai won't wake up. And if I wake dad to wake up Kenai, he will yell at me. Like there's, there's so much evidence and that's why I'm asking for just to keep it the way it is until okay. we can meet the guardian at litem. Do you have a guardian at litem? I was requesting one right now. Okay. I'm doing the so best. Here, that yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to find that there's adequate cause to move forward with d discussing a revision of the parenting plan. I, um, I'm troubled that you're telling me that um, an adult male who you met recently is being put in charge of disciplining your joint child together. Um, I, that's, you, can, you can be surprised by that, but I don't find that acceptable at all. I believe that you're misconstruing my words, but I am okay. fully okay with moving forward. Okay. I and also, hold on, ma'am. Ma it's, it's my turn to talk. I also find that there's adequate cause based on the housing instability. And again, that is not a, a basis for finding you are an inadequate parent. It is a basis for finding that there's a substantial change in circumstances since you all entered the, the agreed resolution on September 6th. The court and you, ma'am, and Mr. Zimmerman 
all need to be sure that the children have a safe place to be when they are with both of you. Okay. I, I'm guessing that the agreed parenting plan, um, probably, uh, well, I'll just say it sounds like it was presented to the court as an agreed parenting plan. You didn't have a guardian ad litem at that time. I agree with Ms. Zimmerman that you absolutely need one. I think the court needs one in order to determine what's in the best interest of the children. Um, so I'm going to first sign the adequate cause motion. I am finding that there is adequate cause to uh, hold a hearing on the petition. This does not mean I'm adopting the proposed parenting plan of Mr. Zimmerman. It means we are now going to move forward to start discussing what a new parenting plan should look like. I'm going to set a new hearing date in just a minute for that but I am going to appoint a guardian ad litem. Let me ask you to just a little bit about your income so we can decide who's paying for this. Um, Mr. Zimmerman, what's your monthly take home income? Um, at the moment, uh, my monthly take home is, I would say 1200 at the moment a month. Okay. Are you working part-time, full-time? Um, I am in transition of starting a new job through Carl's Towing. Okay. So I'm not, at the moment, I am unemployed. Okay. Do you receive any sort of state-based assistance? No, ma'am. Self-supported. Okay. And then how many dependents do you take care of on that 1200 a month? Um, well, just the children that are here with me, um, on my days, other than that, it's just myself. Okay. And then Ms. Zimmerman, what is your monthly income? I am not sure because, um, I was just getting ready. I started a new job just last week and I was later today, I am finding that out for proof for HUD. Um, and I start my second job, both part-time on Thursday, well, tomorrow. Um, okay. yeah. I just now got daycare squared away to be able to be employed. Um, okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Right now I'm gonna indicate this will be at county pay. 100% um, right now will be paid at county expense because because you both meet the indigency guidelines. However, you're going to see language in here where I state I'm reserving any reimbursement you may have to give for the GAL fee. The maximum total cost for a GAL is $1,485. The county is paying that right now, but we're going to reserve for a later hearing since both of you are starting new jobs. We'll reserve, um, I may inquire about your income at a later date to determine if there's any reimbursement uh, that I would apportion you two to pay towards that county cost, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Give me just a minute to fill out this paperwork and I'll come back to you with your new court date, okay? So what we're gonna do, oh, thank you. Okay, so what we would normally do, and I don't expect any of you to have strong opinions, but I am required to read. Um, so Twyla, is it Corey? Yes. Uh, Twyla Corey is the name of the first GAL on our list. Heather Call is the second, and Amy Turnbull is the third. Do any of you know any of these individuals or want to strike them from consideration for your GAL? No, ma'am. No, Your Honor. Okay, so then what we typically do is, uh, while Corey, the first one on the list, will be who I appoint. Okay, so we'll get her appointed. Um, let me just 
set some future dates then. I'm going to give you a few dates. So do you guys all have something to write with? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. So what I want to first do is I would like to set a review date um, on no Wednesday, November 1st at 10.30 a.m. back on this docket. And that will be just a time because of the housing situation, I would like to be able to chat about whether we need to make any temporary changes to the parenting plan, depending on Ms. Zimmerman, your housing situation, if there's a place for the, the kids or not. Um, but then we're gonna set our next review 30 days out from now. That'll be the first time I expect to have some GAL input. So that'll be November 15, 2023 at uh, 9am. And this one's to discuss what? That will be the, so we usually give the GAL 30 days to meet with you all and, and issue some sort of kind of initial thought or hey, court, here's where I think we need some follow up, that sort of thing. So okay. it's, a, it's a GAL review. You both are present. And then we're going to go. That one is. I'm going to go 60 days out. Hopefully we don't need to go that far, but just to get them on the schedule, I think we'll do 60 days out for kind of our final GAL review. So that'll be December 20, 2023 at 9 a.m. Now, what time was the November 1st? Is the same thing, 9 a.m.? 10.30. Oh, I'm sorry, and Ms. Zimmerman's correct. I said 10.30 and I was wrong, it's 9 a.m. It'll always be 9 a.m. That was my misspoken time. Thank you. So all, all three of these review dates, November 1, November 15, and December 20 will all be at 9 a.m. Okay. And then let me, can you give me the current ages of the children? Yes, the uh, Sarah is 13. Okay. And Kenai is eight. Perfect. And then both of you, at least for now, are the addresses and phone numbers you have on file with the court your current addresses and phone numbers? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. So then going back to the motion for adequate cause. What I'm going to mark on this is that we are going to set a hearing on, on the actual underlying parenting plan. Right now, we're going to set it for December 20, 2023. That's our review date that we think our GAL will have the report finalized. That's 60 days out. Oh, yeah. But if we have our first, our early review dates, and we think we can get it done quicker. I am open to changing that date sooner if that's what the parties want. But for the time being, the parenting plan in place is what you all will adhere to. Um, we're just starting to move through this process of, hey, is this in the children's best interest, okay? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I think I've got everything filled out. Any questions for me? I have one, Your Honor. Go ahead. Um, with the drug allega allegations and the instability accusations, um, I already have an appointment set up for a mental health and drug treatment evaluation. Great, okay. Um, and willing to do a UA at any given time. I don't know if you are willing to make that a part of this for both parents? So what I would typically do is wait on, because right now it's kind of just he said, she said, she said, he said. 
That's why I'm appointing the GAL. That's why I think it's a great idea. So the GAL would typically say, hey, I think court, this is something we want to do. So I'm going to wait at least for her first 30 day review. That said, taking proactive measures to show the court those things that you're doing, never a bad idea for either party. So, yep, kudos to you. All right, thank you, that was it. Okay, all right, you're free to log out. Thank you, Your Honor, have a good day. Thank you. Your Honor, this is um, Christopher Zimmerman. I was under the impression that we were um, represented by a GAL now. I'm not sure um, if that's the case for this, uh, this actual hearing. Okay, let me, let me pull up your file. This is 233002148. We did just recently appoint Ms. Corey, um, but her involvement, our review dates for that were starting November 15th. So okay. I'm, I'm just looking, just stick tight with me. Um, we do have this on for a review hearing for November 1st to review the housing situation. So do we have Ms. Zimmerman on? Uh, she- I'm here. Okay. There you are, okay. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't have a GAL with you today. That's on for first review 1115. So much like you've heard from other cases, the, the more in touch you are with the GAL before the November 15th hearing, the more we can get done um, at that hearing. Okay. Um, this, I'm just looking at the notes from the last hearing. Um, There, the reason we initially found adequate cause and embarked on this road to kind of reevaluate the parenting plan um, was because Ms. Zimmerman, your potential housing situation, as well as another adult in your home, that there were some potential concerns over. What can you tell the court about your current housing situation? Well, first off, I never had another adult in my home. Um, and second off, um, the place that I'm waiting on is actually being redone. And so I have decided to temporarily um, allow my children to stay with their dad okay. until uh, I get into the next place. Okay. Well, and just to your first point, when we were here last, you indicated that there was another adult male staying with you. Um, that's I did not indicate that it was indicated and there was a situation to where another adult was at the house. Okay, so I'm just reading from the minutes from uh, Ms. Zimmerman at 1010 responding to the court, quote, friend currently staying with her, end quote. So in the garage. So the person was staying with you, but in the garage. So you're making the distinction between- Yeah, it was very temporarily. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't sound like we need to do anything today if the children, Mr. Zimmerman, are temporarily with you. The point of today's review was to make sure that they did have uh, a roof over their head. And it sounds like that is the case, correct? Yes. Um, I just uh, was wanting to see about somehow getting- uh, something in writing. Um, so that way I could uh, it, apply for some food benefits, um, just temporarily, but, um, it, that's the, the, the importance is, is the children have a roof over their head. That, that, that is okay. correct. It's, it's important. Okay. What I will do. And is it, do you have both kids with you right now? Uh, they're in school, but yes. I, I don't mean right now, but I mean, yeah. staying with yeah. you. Okay. Yes. So what I'll just do is indicate that um, minor children currently to reside with father 
um, pending housing situation with mother and further review of this court. And then you can get a copy of that order if you need it for benefits. Okay, and also I'm just wanted to say this in the courts, I'm gonna be talking to a few people that I know who are renters. And if something falls through, I'm gonna try to help assist in Desiree finding a place. So that way we can make sure the kids don't get too affected by this and they still have time with mom and everything and stuff like, you know, just I want it to be less effective on the children. I think that's helpful for your children. So I appreciate that. And then, uh, so for the two of you, please get in contact with the GAL. We'll have you back November 15th, Wednesday at 9 a.m. with the GAL to talk about what the parenting plan should look like and where we're at with um, where, where kiddos need to reside slash visit. We'll take okay. that up in two weeks, okay? All right, and I think Desiree was trying to say something. Ms. Zimmerman, did you have something to add? Not at this time. Okay, we'll see you back in two weeks. Please be in touch with the GAL. All right, thank you. Thank you. Desiree Zimmerman, Christopher Zimmerman, and we have Ms. Corey with us. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, Mr. Zimmerman. Do we have Desiree Zimmerman? Oh, there you are. Here. Let me get into the file quickly. So I have us on for review. Um, we did temporarily at least um, indicate that the children would be residing with father. Um, mother was in the process of changing um, housing situations. So maybe first I'll turn it over to Ms. Corey for any input she may have. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I have had the opportunity to, um, both parents return their paperwork. Um, I had the opportunity to review that and interview both of them via Zoom. Have not yet made um, visits to Mr. Zimmerman's home. And um, I believe Ms. Zimmerman, Ms. Pierce is uh, in between homes right now. Um, I have not as of yet had the opportunity to meet with the children. Um, I did, I was able to review at least some of the court record on this case and um, had a couple of questions actually. Um, wondering if before the next review and the next review is set as the final review for December 20th, is that correct? Hmm, let's see. Seemed a little quick. That does seem very quick, but that is what I put in the order. But I'm also wondering why I didn't put an interim review date. And I wonder if I meant for that to be our interim. Um, um, but go but ahead with your question and we can rearrange dates. If, if that was the interim review date, I would like to ask that both parties do a hair follicle test for, re, for the court's review before that date. Okay. Okay. Is either party opposed to that? No, Your Honor. I agree to that. I'm just looking. So let's do that. I can do a bench order to that effect. Let's make December 20. Um, the interim. Sorry, I'm trying to type, look at the calendar and write at the same time. I'm not that great at it. I know the pain. Okay, so interim, we'll ch I'll do a bench order changing the interim GAL report to 1220. Um, hopefully hair follicle by then. Um, and, and would your honor be looking for a written report at that time or a verbal review? 
Um, let's just do verbal for the 20th. And then let's set a proposed final. Um, how far out would you want to go on that? And that'll obviously put us into 2024. But as I learned um, this morning, it'll be the same Wednesday at 9 a.m. Um, so four or five weeks out would be perfect. So what if we what if we do that last week of January? Uh January 31st, 2024. Okay. And then uh will that work for all the parties? So next two court dates, 12 20, 2023, excuse me, and then January 31, 2024. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Good work. Yeah. Anything else you all want to go over? Do you all, it, it, I know sometimes people get um, confused with where to get hair follicle testing and how to go about that. Do both of you have contact information for that? And if not, Ms. Corey does. I was just going to go ahead and email her after your court and find that out. Perfect. All right. Sounds good. Thank you all. You're free to log out. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to call now a six, seven, and eight on my docket, the Zimmerman matters. Um, do I have Desiree and Christopher? I'm here. So these are dockets two, three, three, zero, zero, two, one, four, zero, eight. I have these all on for review hearings. Um, I think today, if I am not mistaken, we're reviewing um, just the, an interim GAL status. So Ms. Corey, maybe I'll first turn it over to you and then that may dictate where we go this morning. Um, yes. Yeah. I believe that's correct. Um, I actually have January 31st as the final JL review date. I have that. Uh, and, th and this was to be a review after uh, hair follicle tests were ordered for both parties. And I have received those um, from both parties. Um, Ms. Zimmerman's uh, test was completely negative. Um, and Mr. Zimmerman's was not. His hair follicle test uh, found for the presence of amphetamines um, in quite, uh, it, it appears to be to uh, quite, quite a ways over the, the limit that they use for a cutoff. Um, other concerns, there is one other concern that I have, um, and that is regarding Mr. Zimmerman's girlfriend, who I learned um, after um, looking at Odyssey. She is a just about a two-year-old third-degree assault charge that she was found guilty of. Um, and I have not yet been able to uh, get those records um but i i will be reviewing them in the future okay. so this mr zimmerman um two slightly concerning points um here and i'm gonna come to you in just a second okay i'm gonna go to ms zimmerman first um, thank you for doing the hair follicle. I'm very glad to hear. Well, Mr. Zimmerman, there's someone nearby you talking that the court is hearing. So go ahead and mute yourself until okay. we're calling on you. So Ms. Zimmerman, I know one of the things that instigated all of this was your housing situation. What can you tell me about that now? Um, I am moved into my new place, three bedroom. Um, 
the living situation was just temporary. Um, the kids have their own rooms and we're happy. And are the kids back with you now? I know we the parties had agreed previously that the children would reside with the father because of housing issues pending further review of this court. Are the kids back with you now? I guess I'm just waiting to hear from the courts what is best. Right now they are with me physically. Okay. Um, and uh, from the last court date, I was just sticking to the original parenting plan that we had originally signed off of and plan to return them 10 o'clock at night on Christmas Eve because that's what it says on the original. Okay. So I do, I am going to change the interim bench order we had um, indicating that the parties had agreed the children would reside to, with father until further review of this court. Um, I'm going to change that to um, indicate that they are to reside with mother at this time. Mr. Zimmerman, what would you like to tell me first about the hair follicle test? I am on prescribed um, high doses of Adderall from my prescriber um, the last couple of months. They have upped and lowered and then re-upped my amounts taken. They're testing the amount that is more beneficial for me. Um, I have two different prescriptions of, of, of Adderall that I am prescribed that I take on a daily basis. Um, I have 30 milligram um, extended release plus to 20 milligrams that I take throughout the day as a booster. So that alone right there is going to be high amounts that is going to be in my system. And I don't have the benefit of having that report in front of me. So I, I really can't make a judgment about whether a prescription for Adderall would cause that kind of result. Is there any indication, Ms. Corey, in the report that, that they address that issue at all? Um, typically in the reports, if, uh, if there is a prescribed medication that may be affected, it's noted in the report as an expected result, and that was not noted. However, Mr. Zimmerman, um, in his intake for me, did list Adderall as one of his med medications. I also sent a, a, a picture over via email of my prescription medication list. But Mr. Zimmerman, did you discuss when you went in for the hair follicle, did you discuss the prescriptions that you? Yes, I've used their services before for uh, on the job injury, as well as testing for a new job. And they had that all on documents is what they told me. Are there any positives beyond the amphetamine? No. No. Okay. And I can show you my prescription bottle right now on camera if that would be beneficial. No, it's okay. I think what I'd like to do though is just have you um, reach back out to them with your prescription and the amount. They can do a supplement on whether then the positive is an expected result given your prescription. Okay. Okay. I think that will be really helpful for the court. The second question does involve uh, an individual. So is this significant other at this point or girlfriend uh, residing with you? No, she is my fiance. She is not residing with me. She has her own place. Um, she's when 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 the kids are here, they are. She's weird. Me, her, and I are usually together. We're not. I don't leave my children with anybody. Um, so yeah, no, we we don't live together. She has her own place of residence. I have mine. She's in all the services that she needs to be in. She's doing absolutely fantastic. Was this, and again, I don't have the benefit of any of this in front of me, is this, was this an assault three conviction? Yes. She's in DV classes, she's in treatment, she's, uh, lives in a, um, a program house called the Phoenix House. Um, she has more clean time than I do, uh, when it comes to paperwork, so, um, yeah, it's, Ms. Desiree Zimmerman, was this information that you're aware of? Do you have concerns about what is your perspective? Ms. 
Mr. Zimmerman, I'm assuming that's your fiance in the background that I keep hearing. She's not a party to this case. Nobody's said anything in my in my in my house. The only person that spoke was me, unless it's my TV in the background. Miss, I muted it. Ms. Desiree Zimmerman, can you hear the court? Yes. Okay. You you were you aware of some of this information regarding the fiance? Um, absolutely. Um, my kids have expressed um, their opinions on it. Um, at first, they really liked her, but as of recently, they feel like her demeanor and stuff has changed more aggressively towards their dad and has made them feel uncomfortable, um, which is a little bit concerning. So with regard to, and I'm just going to go back right now, just a second, I'm pulling up your original final parenting plan, the one that would still be in effect until we do something new. Um, they reside with you and then they have visitation with him on, they go to him on Wednesdays. Is that what is still happening? That's the usual one, but it's a little bit different. What do you mean it's a little bit different? Ms. Zimmerman, can you still hear me? We can't hear you. First half. Well, Ms. Zimmerman, you cut out. And, um, sorry. Sorry, you're going to have to start all over. After I ask my question, you cut out. Is that better? It is for now. Let's, yeah. I'm just trying to ask what you're currently doing with visitation. Um, I plan on um, dropping them off 10 o'clock at night, Christmas Eve. And so that way they can have, he can have the kids for Christmas day. I did want to bring a couple things up. I well, hold on. Yeah. Just hold on a second. But when it's not Christmas break, are you all switching kids on Wednesdays? Um, I just, just, uh, last Friday, um, uh, got the keys to my place, but I do plan on doing that and being consistent with that. Are you asking for any temporary changes to that, knowing that the fiance will likely be around during those visits? Um, I've just had talks with my children that if something were to happen um, physically aggressive or to where they felt unsafe to call 911 or call me, uh, they're both at the ages to where they're capable of doing so. Um, and I just try to have some kind of trust in Chris um, that he wouldn't allow something like that to happen to our children. Um, and just hope for the best. I mean, I don't agree with a lot of his choices, but I do still want him to have a relationship with his children. Yeah. So. Okay, we'll come back to that in a second. Ms. Zimmerman, you said there were other issues you wanted to discuss. Go ahead. Um, there's been a couple times now that Chris has been late with picking um, he, our youngest up from daycare. And uh, because the daycare is in my name, I've had to pay those fees off. And I haven't received any kind of payment back. Um, that would be one of them and i have to think of the other thing i was going to bring up i forgot now i'm sorry <laughs> mr zimmerman what's happening with some of the late pickups so the the first time i was in the middle of an appointment and i i was late so the appointment was supposed to be over with and i was i i didn't think to call call desiree and let her know um so as soon as the appointment was done um, desiree called me i ran over there and grabbed him um and then the second time i was literally 
connecting my new cell phone that I have. And it was rebooting in the middle of another appointment. And so I wasn't able to call her and let her know this time. So as soon as that my phone rebooted, I was already on my way there. She said she was already there. I met her there and I picked him up. I'm also getting a, a, a substantial check today uh, from L and I due to a work related injury. Um, and I am, I already told her I was going to pay her back. We already discussed all this. Um, and to the fact that, uh, with the, the fiance thing, uh, her and I have never even gotten to a verbal fight. We've never argued with each other. We've always had strict communication, pure communication. Um, we've, it's, it, you know, she has moments where, where she's grumpy. I mean, every human being on this planet, she's, she's a lives with her two children. She's, she's uh, regaining custody of her youngest son through CPS. And so she is literally doing everything she's supposed to be doing. She has had a, had a couple of grumpy moments, but every human being in, in the world is going to have grumpy moments. But other than that, we've never fought. We've never, you know, argued about anything. <laughs> but she's the woman that's around your children has lost custody of her own children. Is that what you're telling me? Desiree and I have lost custody of our own children. People change. These are your children. These are your children. So I'm just your 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 children's biological mom has a right to be concerned about other folks that are in her children's life. So in my bench order today, I'm going to indicate that just pending full GAL investigation and reports. Parties are temporarily going back to the children primarily residing with mothers or housing situation is stabilized. Their hair follicle test is negative. Father shall not leave minor children unattended with his fiance at any time during his visitation time. I, I mean that. I mean, not even I'm talking. It's not you slipping out to the grocery store and your fiance is watching the girls. It is truly your 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 co-parent Ms. Zimmerman trusts you with the children. She does not have to nor should she right now trust your fiance with her children. So at all times when the children are in your care and custody if your fiance is around you are to be there. I understand the age of the children and so if your fiance is at home and you need to jump out to the grocery store, I'm not saying your kids can't ever be home alone. I am saying if the fiance is there, you are to be there as well. I understand. Sounds like the other issues with pickups and that sort of thing have been addressed. Is there anything else we need to do today? Yes, there is one thing that I do have a concern of is the gentleman that my my children's mother um, have been having my children around um, convicted felons, active addiction. Um, that is a huge concern for me. Um, I was just informed about the information uh, a couple of days ago about the gentleman that Desiree told me she was looking for to try to get into a relationship with. And so I never had a chance to reach out to the GAL because it's, well, I worked yesterday and today is, is Tuesday or Wednesday. So um, it's a big concern for me. The gentleman that Desiree has been seeing is far from a good person. And I would like the same thing done in the other direction, if possible. His name is Scott Birch and I can allow the, the GAL to do her part in that. Mr. Zimmerman, I didn't ask for your fiance's name for very specific reasons. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think about that. Not throwing someone else into the mix that frankly, I don't have any information on. Ms. Corey, is this anyone that you're aware of? No, it's not. Okay. Well, Mr. Zimmerman, if you want to present that information to the GAL, we can address it at a subsequent hearing. I have no information. Okay. That about this that would independently verify any of the things that you're stating. Understand. Uh, can I speak for a second? Go ahead, ma'am. Um, I am not in any kind of relationship at all, nor do I plan on be for a while. I was just trying to be um, 
in open communication with him and letting him know that this person was someone of interest in the future and a possibility. Um, and the only time that I really had him around the children was the day of I had to rush over and grab our son from daycare. It was unplanned. I had actually even expressed to Chris I was going to be unavailable that day because that was the day that I was moving and I was receiving help from my friends with helping move stuff. So I'm not, I'm not taking action on any of that today. Um, and again, Mr. Zimmerman can, can present whatever evidence he would like to that regard to Ms. Corey. She will certainly follow up on that as she does her report. Um, I think our next review is the 131, the January 31st, 2024, 9 a.m. Does that sound right to the parties? Yes. Um, do we need anything in between those dates for review? I don't believe so, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll see you back January 31st, 2024. Thank you all. Ms. Corey, I see that your, your camera's on. Did you have a matter you'd like to address? Yes, uh, the Zimmerman, Zimmerman matter, I believe it's number seven on the docket. Um, I came into some information late last week that um, slowed me down a little bit that I needed to include in my report. And I'd like to ask for uh, a couple weeks continuance, please. Thank you. So I, I so Ms. Corey is here as the guardian ad litem. The cause number is 23321408. I see that Christopher Zimmerman's on the line. Mr. Zimmerman, can you hear me okay? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, great. Thanks for being here today. And then uh, Desiree Zimmerman, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, well, welcome to you also, Ms. Zimmerman. All right, so Ms. Uh, Ms. We're here today to to receive the 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 uh, final iteration of the guardian ad litem report. Ms. Corey indicated that she needs a, additional uh, time based on some new information that came to light. So she's asking for a continuance for her to submit that for you to review it and give the court an opportunity to review it. And so I'll ask if any party has an, any objection to that. So Mr. Zimmerman, do you have any objection? No, Your Honor. Okay, uh, Ms. Zimmerman, do you have any objection to that? Uh, I. I'm just a little bit confused because I thought this was the final court hearing. Yeah, there, there was intention today to have a what's called the final guardian ad litem report. And then hopefully based on that, make some some decisions. Uh, but uh, Ms. Corey's indicated she doesn't have that report uh, prepared as of yet. And she's asking for a two week set over. OK. OK. So I'll, I'll grant that request. The two weeks from today is the docket's fairly full. So let me just ask the parties if there's any strong objection if we were to set it to the 21st of February, February 21. Mr. Zimmerman? Uh, no, sir. No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Zimmerman, any strong objection if we were to set it to the 21st? No. All right, and Ms. Corey, how about you? Sounds good, thank you. Ms. Desiree Zimmerman, I wanted to also ask for a continuance as well. All right, this is on uh, Desiree Zimmerman and Christopher Zimmerman, cause number 23321408. Yeah. Pull up my notes. Here we have Ms. Uh, Corey joining us as the guardian ad litem. This is the date set for uh, the GAL report uh, that's been submitted. I've reviewed that. I'll ask if Christopher Zimmerman is on the line. Yes, that's me, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Zimmerman, I see you and I can hear you. Um, let me ask Ms. Zimmerman the, the basis of your request to continue the matter. I would like time to file a grievance. You'd like time to file a grievance, did you say? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So the grievance process is generally separate and apart from the, the court process, so you're free to file that grievance at any time you feel that would be appropriate. Um, as far as the guardian ad litem report and the review and such, uh, I think we need to, uh, to review that. Um, so do you have any other reasons why you'd like to continue the matter? When I was looking up the process, it stated that there needed to be an um, active court case going on in order to do that. Yeah, the case is active. At the, you know, if the matter is being docketed and it's being heard, then it's, it's an active case. Okay. 
So, um, so I think I'll deny the request to, con to continue the matter, and we'll we'll address it today. Um, so, I, I just want to make sure that both parties have received a copy of uh, Ms. Corey's uh, report. Mr. Uh, Zimmerman, did you receive a copy of that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and Ms. Zimmerman, did you receive a copy of it? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'll just hear just uh, briefly from Ms. Corey, if you have any uh, comments you'd like to maybe highlight or any summary you'd like to provide related to the report or no. Um, no, I, I did want to mention, though, that um, it came to my attention after my report had been sent out to the parties that the uh, Ms. Zimmerman had shared the report with her children, it seems. And um, I, I just found that disturbing. Um, otherwise, I believe my report speaks for itself. It could have easily been several hundred pages. Um, so quite a complex case. Okay. All right, thank you. May I speak, Your Honor? Sure, go ahead, Ms. Zimmerman. I did not, in fact, share with my children. I went to speak with my sponsor about the outcome because myself and my support group were with the facts that we had um, prepared to advocate on my behalf of my of Christopher Zimmerman to make sure that no time was taken from him and was completely caught off guard from her report, which um, includes lies and false information. Um, and when I stepped out of my car to be away from my daughter, I left my phone in there and my 13 year old daughter could tell that I was very upset and opened up my phone to read it herself, which was still on the last page of the outcome. Okay. Feel free if you'd like to share any additional information in response to the, the Guardian Ad Litem report. I feel like she did not uh, properly uh, go over all information. Um, during our visit, I had our children present. Um, after she was done interviewing our children, I asked for us to sit down to go over my information that I have. And she stated that after speaking with our children that she felt that was unnecessary, that she had enough information. And then after that, she went and met with Christopher Zimmerman. And during that meeting, um, I was asked to go pick up our children from his house so that way they could have an interview without the children present. And I feel like that was unfair to me that I was not able to show her all the evidence that I have at hand. All right, Ms. Irwin, can, can I ask you just maybe a more specific question? The, the guardian ad litem makes some specific recommendations at the end of the report after detailing some of the information that she's received. Do you have any input related to the recommendations that she makes? I do not agree with it whatsoever. I have, have our children most of the time Anyways, um, as of this morning, uh, Christopher Zimmerman messaged me if I was willing to sign off on 50-50 if he was to become the primary. I don't feel that it would benefit our children at all. One of the statements that um, Twyla Corey had mentioned in her report is that my daughter, Sarah Zimmerman, is failing all of her classes, and I have her most recent report card from since she's been with me and she all of her grades have gone up so when you said you disagree with the report entirely do you disagree that the, the possible drug use of your daughter should be addressed i do agree with that i have a message christopher zimmerman um, about sitting down with him and coming up with a solution for that even okay uh, we were supposed to sit down this weekend and talk about a lot of things when it comes to our children, and it never happened. I've called him and messaged him several times to try to do that. 
Okay. And do you, do you agree or disagree with the, the recommendation to ensure that the, ch the children are not exposed to people who are actively using drugs? I do absolutely agree to that. Um, with that being said, uh, Christopher Zimmerman and myself are both addicts in recovery, and our main support is at Narcotics Anonymous, full of addicts in recovery, and a lot of times part of people in recovery do relapse. When that happens with somebody in my circle, I set appropriate boundaries. And do you agree or disagree with the recommendation that both parents should ensure that the child is uh, properly attending school and attending to her homework? I agree to that. Okay. And there's a recommendation as far as a UA so that either either party can request UAs? I absolutely agree to that. I get UA'd regularly. Um, okay. Sorry. And then there's a recommendation that uh, both parties take a, a age-appropriate uh, parenting class. Do you agree agree with that or disagree with that? I have taken every parenting class available and I have the certificates for that, but I absolutely am open to a refresher course, Your Honor. Okay. And then so it sounds like in large part you're you're agreeing with the recommendations, but you disagree with the the, the residential time split. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Zimmerman. Let me touch base with Mr. Mr. Zimmerman if you have any input related to the, the recommendations made by Ms. Ms. Corey. <clears throat> Let's see, Mr. Zimmerman, it looks like you're you're muted, so if you make sure you're unmuted. Sorry, I'm at work, so I got a company CB radio that, that goes on, so... <clears throat> So do you have any, uh, Ms. Zimmerman provided some feedback related to the recommendations made by the guardian ad litem. Do you have any, any uh, anything you'd like to comment on or? Well, I have noticed a, a significant uh, difference in uh, Desiree's um, progress. It's a, a positive difference. It's not a negative difference. Um, I want to be able to work out a better uh, residential schedule than what was recommended. However, um, I don't want the children to have to suffer any more than they already have. Um, I was going to speak with Desiree uh, this weekend. However, I was really busy. Uh, my work schedule is kind of crazy. I'm on call. I work 12 hours a day, sometimes longer. So I kind of just relaxed and took the time to recuperate because I transport people for a living and my sleep is very important and making sure that I don't, you know, go to work tired and cause an accident. It'd be really bad. But um, I did reach out to her this morning, asked her if that would be something she was interested in. Um, I didn't get a straight answer. So I just said, never mind. I'm in agreement with the, um, with the, the recommendations as far as Sarah's drug use, the schooling, Pretty much everything. The only thing I'd like to do is 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 speak more and try to get a little more residential time added for Desiree um, because I feel that that would be uh, healthier for the kids, mental health wise, so to speak. You know, um, having time with both parents is is a good feeling for a child to have. I know that I didn't get that option growing up as a child. Um, but uh, Miss Corey, I feel Miss Corey did an excellent job in what she, in in doing her job. So, Mr. Zimmer, you mentioned that you you felt it'd, it'd be helpful for the children that they had more time with with their mother. What what time recommendations would you have? Well, as long as she continues the progress that she has been making, I am fully agreeable to do fifty fifty custody, like fifty fifty residential schedule. Um. You know, but like with that, I said, if I see any more regression or there's people that I don't approve of that are around our children, that I'd be able to redact some of that time because the whole point of this is whatever is better for our children. And saying to my 13 year old daughter that she can't be around her mom uh, from one point of time, like say every other weekend, I feel that that would cause resentments towards me from my 13 year old, which would also cause her to, to act out on those feelings. And so I'm trying to make sure that the decision that we all agree upon is beneficial for everybody. I just don't want 
people fresh out of prison or people who are still in and out of using around my children. I, I don't, I don't have anybody like that in my life whatsoever. I, I don't allow nobody to really go to my house if they are part of my direct family. You know, I, I keep, that's my children's safe hold, you know, so. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. Ms. Corey, uh, there's a, um, do you have any, any thoughts related to the suggested 50, 50 time split? Um, so, uh, I, I made that decision, I guess, um, based on this particular moment in time that Ms. Zimmerman is, um, just just got into an apartment when i was over there she had uh, basically a chair and a bed um, no beds for the children um, there were her older children who um, aren't of age but kind of coming and going staying with her at, at times um, which is is not a huge deal um, but I just felt that Mr. Zimmerman had the more stable environment and with, especially with the daughter's um, attendance and grades in school, um, he was kind of more on top of things, meeting with the truancy officer um, and making a plan for moving forward yeah, for Sarah. Um, but it, it actually, you know, if that were to be a graduated plan for uh, more time for Ms. Zimmerman in the future, that was also something that I considered and that I would definitely be okay with. Um, these, these parents both love their children very much and they, and they want what's best for them. They just have different ideas of what that is. Um, and I believe Mr. Zimmerman is in a better position to uh, follow through and take care of those needs at this moment in time. All right. So I think what I what I want to do, I you know, I'm in here and I've read the report, and then there's some some uh, there's a new proposal that's that's kind of been put forth by Mr. Zimmerman. Um, Ms. Ms. Corey has commented on that. Um, I, and she's made mention that um, maybe a graduated plan moving from uh, maybe a more restrictive visitation time for the mother to a more expansive, maybe a 50-50 time plan, a graduated plan, um, uh, may be something that would be a very good for the children. Uh, so I, I think, you know, rather than making a decision here on the fly without really kind of having considered that um, in the context of the entire case, what I'd like to do is have uh, the parties provide some input on what that graduated plan might might look like, uh, whether that's a, a, a plan that starts off with supervised visitation or limited visitation or weekend visitation, and then some, something that phases up over a period of time based on compliance with UAs or, or something of that nature. Uh, and so I'd like to have the parties uh, submit something to the court uh, to, to, to read and consider. Um, and also, Ms. Corey could could chime in uh, briefly with a, a potential graduated plan. I also also would like an updated. Uh, Ms. Ms. Zimmerman had indicated that child's grades uh, had improved, and so I'm hoping to get some uh, data points related to the the schooling, the attendance, and the grades with updated records. Uh, to so that's that's what I'm thinking. I, I don't I don't want to make a, a decision today without having considered a potential graduated plan, since uh, both parties seem to think that's uh, would be better in their children's interests. Uh, so I would like to give the party some time to submit that information and then come back and consider it and uh, hear from the parties again. So I would like to set it over to the let's see one two I'm thinking three weeks to the 13th of March at at nine o'clock in the morning. That would allow the parties to draft something, hopefully um, this week or next and submit it to the other side and to Ms. Corey, um, and then come back here on the 13th to discuss that and talk about uh, potential revision of the, the parenting plan based on the input that the parties have provided. So I'll, I'll ask the uh, Ms. Zimmerman if you have any thoughts about that. Um, Your Honor, first off, um... 
the statement that she just made is untrue. I just got my place and I had a couch, kitchen table, chairs, air mattresses for my children. And uh, she asked if I needed help with anything. And I said I needed mattresses, which I have set up tomorrow to pick up. Um, But with that being said, this is much better than what her final report stated. um, And I am willing to do that. Okay, so you'll be available on March 13th, and you're willing to submit some uh, information in, in writing re- regarding a graduated uh, potential parenting plan and also an update on school grades and attendance and an update on the housing situation? Absolutely. All right, thank you. Mr. Zimmerman? Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I am in agreement with that. However, there is a thing that the, the other... Um, judge had put a stipulation about my fiance um, not being around the children unsupervised and then we were supposed to readdress that last time we had court um i was hoping to get that lifted because when i'm working the only person that i have available really that would be able to help me get my kid to school while i am at work because of my schedule would be my fiance which my fiance is an amazing person. Miss Corey has been able to meet her. Um, and I was hoping to be able to maybe have that lifted. I know that Miss Zimmerman does not, or Desiree does not have any issues with her whatsoever. Um, and my children do adore her. So um, I was just kind of hoping that that could be, that that restriction be lifted. So that way I have more help while I'm working um, to make sure that, that the kids have a ride to school. Your Honor, I also agree with what he says. I've never had an issue with her being in their life. I'm aware of her background. Um, A lot of people that we socialize with, um, like I said before, are in recovery. And I know that she's in services and bettering her life. And she loves her children. And I think that um, Christopher uh, could use her help. Um, it meant for our children and being successful during his time. Good. Thank you. Ms. Corey, related to the I, Mr. Zimmer. I, I have no problem with that. Okay. All Thanks. right. Looks like on December 20th, 2023, Carmi imposed that. It says, Father shall not leave minor children unattended with his family <laughs> anytime during his visit. I'm, I'll lift that and... Um, so that she can participate and be with the children and help in the way that she can and is interested in helping. Um, there is also a request. Um, okay. There, from December 20th, there is a, a request or order that Ms. Zimmerman have a follicle test completed. Has, has that been done, Ms. Ms. Zimmerman? Yes, and I passed it. That was done immediately. Okay, and was that did, were the results submitted? I'm not sure if I saw those. Yes. And Miss Miss Corey, did you receive a copy of those? I did. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so we will return. Sounds like the March 13th date at nine o'clock works for everybody. Uh, so we'll come back on that date. Uh, we'll have input from the parts related to school attendance and grades, um, a potential or proposed graduated parenting plans. Uh, moving up to 50-50, um, then I'll draft uh, just a brief order lifting the restriction related to uh, the unsupervised or unattended with the fiancé of Mr. Zimmerman, and we'll lift that. Okay, so any anything, any any lingering questions or just see everybody on the 13th of March? 13th of March sounds good, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Zimmerman? Thank you. March 13th, thank you for your time. Great. Ms. Corey? Thanks, Your Honor. Great. Thank you. Next, I have uh, Desiree Zimmerman and, and Christopher Zimmerman, 2332 Uh Desiree, first, are you on the line? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Okay. Welcome to you. I see Ms. Corey is here, the guardian ad litem, and then Christopher Zimmerman, are you here? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. All parties are present. Um, at our last court hearing, uh, the court had asked the parties to submit information related to, to a graduated parenting plan and also information related to schooling and grades. I didn't see anything that was uh, updated in the file related to that. Uh, we have the recommendations from the guardian ad litem, and, uh, and so I'll hear from 
Um, Ms. Corey, if you have any any updates. Yes, I do. Um, so these parties have basically come to an agreement. Um, however, I have some serious reservations about that. Um, I haven't yet seen the agreement, um, but at 8.18 this morning, Mr. Zimmerman indicated that they didn't have an agreement. And then just a few minutes later, uh, I received a message that they did. Um, I, I really have very little confidence that this agreement will stick. And I would I really want it to for these kids. Um, so if if I can refresh the court's memory that this couple's dissolution and permanent parenting plan went into effect on September 6th of last year. On September 22nd, uh, just two weeks later, um, we were back at it again. Mr. Zimmerman filed um, for a modification at that point. Um, but as I said, I haven't seen this agreement yet, I, but I do feel that I don't know that this couple is our candidates for mediation, but either mediation or for it to go to trial is going to bring the best solution for the children. You said it would, mediation or trial would bring the best solution, you say? Yes, I believe so. I don't think these parents, um, they had an agreed order before, and then two weeks after that was finalized, we were back in court for um, some very good reasons. And now um, there is this supposed agreement that came in at the final hour, and I'm, I guess I'm just not, not really buying that that both parents um, are invested in this order and that that's really what they want to go forward with. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Corey. All right. Um, I see Mr. Zimmerman, you turned on your, your camera. Maybe I, I could hear from you, you, you first. Um, so um, let me just, maybe before we do that, Mr. Zimmerman, I apologize. Um, there was the guardian ad litem report that was filed back in February. There's, and there's not there was an order of adequate cause that was granted back in august october of 2023 and we've been kind of working under that adequate cause order since that time so the parenting plan is still at issue uh, just as probably more for my benefit to review that than anything so mr zimmerman i'll hear from you looks like your mute's on mr zimmerman uh, when I filed the motion for modification um, due to the circumstances uh, that were actually detrimental at the time, I filed those, and since the time of me filing those, um, I have noticed a significant improvement um, with uh, Ms. Fierce Zimmerman um, in, in regards to where her priorities are, um, she's found stable housing. Uh, she's in services. You know, it's been a complete 360. And so the reason I'm wanting to go with what Desiree and I um, have come to an agreement upon because I was able to call her this morning before or after I'd spoken with Miss with Miss Twyla. Um, I was able to have a, a conversation with Desiree and we came to a verbal agreement. And I feel that it is in the best interest of the mental health of our children um, to finally get this done. And um, with what we came up with is, uh, I think, uh, the best outcome um, when it comes to my 13, our 13-year-old daughter, Sarah, she's at that age where any final decisions are going to have a major impact on her future as well as her mental health today. And coming up with the plan that, that I thought of, I feel that Mrs. Zimmerman and our communication has been absolutely phenomenal the last two months and it just keeps improving. So that's why I came up with, with uh, my idea for the, for the parenting plan. And I would like to avoid any kind of trial if possible. Okay. All right. Thank you. appreciate that. So one thing to, to to take into consideration is that the party submitted this decision and issue to the court. Obviously, um, as a general 
pool, the court feels that the parties generally are in, in the best position to determine what's going to be in the best interest of the children. Um, however, there's some misgivings expressed by Ms. Corey that since the, uh, the, the parties had submitted it to the court, I think the court has an opportunity to at least review what the proposed parenting plan that was discussed this morning between Mr. Zimmerman and Ms. Fierst. Um, so uh, my, my proposal, and I'll hear from Ms. Fierst as to her thought on this, uh, is to have the parties draft up what your agreement is, what that parenting plan looks like, submit it to the court for review and also submit a copy to Ms. Corey. We would come back um, at a different hearing date after we've all taken a look at it um, and then make a decision if the, the court would, will sign off on that agreement. Um, and so uh, that's kind of where I'm, I'm going at this point. So we don't need to talk a lot about the specifics of what you've, what you've discussed and agreed to, but that would need to be put down on paper, uh, a proposed parenting plan submitted to the court. Uh, so for its review, um, and then come back and take a look at it. So I'll hear from Ms. Fierst. Any, any thoughts on that? Hi, Your Honor. Um, actually, we just wanted a um, continuance um, just because with our busy life schedule, we just haven't had a chance to sit down and sign it to be able to make copies to turn into the courts. Um, we have had a conversation and have come to an agreement. It's just trying to find the time to be able to sit down together to sign off on it to be able to turn in to the courts. Okay. Um, would the parties be available on the 3rd of April? I could make that work. Okay. Ms. Fierst? I will not be available that week. Okay. Uh, what about the week prior on the um, on the 27th of March? Would the parties be present or available? Is the guardian at yeah. Latin necessary if we're both coming? Yes. Okay. So what day? 27th of March, Wednesday, 9 a.m. Yes. That works for me. Yes, Ms. I can do that. Okay, so what I'm asking the parties to do is, since you had a conversation today, it sounds like there's an agreement in principle uh, to to submit a proposed parenting plan, submit it to the court, submit a copy to Ms. Corey, um, and then we'll be here on the 27th to review that. Um, I also want an update from the parties, if you could submit some type of declaration indicating what's happening with schooling and grades of, of your daughter, um, I, would, I would appreciate that also. Uh, so then we, we'll come back on the 27th. We'll review uh, that uh, proposed parenting plan, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Any questions? No, Your Honor. Thank you so much. Okay, Ms. Corey? Nope. Thank you. All right. Ms. Fierst? No, thank you for your time, Your Honor. Great. We'll see everybody on the 27th. Thank you. Next, I have Desiree Zimmerman and Christopher Zimmerman. I'll, and this is cause number 23321408. I'll ask if Desiree Zimmerman is on the line. Yes, I am, Your Honor. And you go by Fierst, correct? Your last name, Fierst? My last name isn't fully changed until I can get a hold of a human being for my medical insurance. What's your preference? What would you like uh, to uh, Fierst. All right, so we have Ms. Fierce present, and then Christopher Zimmerman, are you on the line? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and Ms. Corey, are you on the line? I am. All right, welcome to all. Um, so we're here uh, on the guardian ad litem report that was filed on February 16th. Uh, she uh, filed that, and I'll check with uh, Ms. Fierce. Did you receive a copy of that report? A copy of the final parenting plan or the guardian line was final report. Guardian ad litem. Yes. All right. And Mr. Zimmerman, did you receive a copy of that document? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, I reviewed that and the guardian ad litem based on that information provided there and make some recommendations related to primary custody to the father and visit alternating weekend visitations and midweek visits to Ms. Fierst and either party can request a UA. Um, Ms. Corey, anything you would like to highlight with regard to your report? 
Um, no, but the parties have since come to an agreement. Okay. That does differ a bit from my final report. I would ask that some of the other provisions remain. The agreement between the parties is has that been submitted to the court? Or is that just something that you're aware of? I it's been submitted to the courts. Yes. Okay. And do you know if it's been signed by the court? Anybody can answer. I am unaware. Uh, not that I know of. I was told that you you would be getting a copy. I even paid extra to make sure it came straight to you. I thought that's my understanding is that's what was going to be happening today. I have a, a parenting plan in my possession that looks like it's signed by both Ms. Zimmerman, Ms. Fierst, and Mr. Zimmerman, dated uh, respectively the 12th and 13th of March. So that's that's what you're talking about, correct, Ms. Corey? Yes. Okay. Um, so this involves the the two the two girls and one boy. one girl. Oh, sorry. My apologies. How do you, okay. How do you pronounce? It's okay. Our son's name is very unique, and you pronounce it's it. Yeah. Keenai. Okay. Please extend my apologies to Kenai. <laughs> okay. You're okay. <laughs> There's a request. Do you're you're agreeing upon joint decision making, and um, as far as the parenting plan, you're making a recommendation that Mr. Zimmerman be the custodial parent of Kenai, and Ms. Fierce be the custodial parent of Sarah. Is that correct? Yes. And that there would be a 50-50 time split with exchange on Wednesdays, one week on, one week off, one child on Tuesday, both on Wednesdays. What is so help me help me understand what that looks. Basically So the one well, day would be extra for more time with each parent with us with give them time an extra day of the week um to have one on one time with the parent. That way, the because the siblings have a rivalry issue that is actually quite prominent, <laughs> and so they they fight a lot. So this will give them one on one time with each parent one day of the week. Well, and since then, um, we talked about trying because him and I have been on the same page, and um, just kind of learning as we go what works best for the children. And um, we are switching Sarah on Sundays and Kenai on Wednesdays. So that way it's half the time without each other and then half the time with each other and also even for both parents. And are the, are the children, they just, they, they cross paths. They don't reside in the same home for any period of time? They do for half the week. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then let me just take a look at the other provisions in the parenting plan that's been submitted. I do believe that that's the only two things that I've changed about the whole thing. Okay, all right. Having reviewed that, uh, I'll hear from Ms. Corey. Um, I, I actually like this plan better than the the original one. Good job, you guys. I realize it's a, <laughs> a little bit out of the box. Um, but as we know, um, parenting plans always work better when they are coming directly from the parents. This, this parenting plan actually, um, though, does reflect pretty much what they were doing before this case was brought. Um, so it... Um, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, in, in, and, and just confirming with both uh, Ms. Ms. Fierst and Mr. Zimmerman, are, are you okay with the, this proposed order that's been submitted that we just reviewed? Absolutely. I feel that it is in the best interest for both children um, with their mental health, um, because I know that parenting plans can have a significant effect on the children, regardless of if they have involvement directly or not. The outcome always has its 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 you know effects on the children, and this will be 
you know, it shows the children that we are working together to try to give them the best opportunities to be around each other with both parents, as well as giving them separate time from each other to prevent them from having their issues. And hopefully it will be easier to grow a stronger bond between the two of them doing this. Um, as well as, you know, when I first filed for the modification, uh, since since then, you know, Desiree's circumstances have improved dramatically. And I just... I'm I'm comfortable with this order, and I feel that uh, it took us a while after a 15 year marriage and then a sudden s divorce um, to build the communication because things were awkward, things were strange, there was animosities. But since then, we have both grown in our in our own lives, and yeah, we have a healthier communication now. So, okay, all right, thank you. Also, from our past experiences of trying to do this, um, whenever all of the sure. responsibilities have been on either parent, we've both during those times have become very overwhelmed. So that's where we came to a compromise to where each of us are, you know, legally responsible for just one child, parent the other. And we did it the way that we did it because with Sarah being at her older age, she feels more comfortable with mom. And I could be more involved in that kind of stuff. And as Kenai gets older and matures, then he's got his dad as well. And I feel like we both have the best interest at heart when it comes to them. So I, I love how we have it. Okay, thanks. Your Honor. Go ahead, Ms. Corey. Um, I would re also request that um, other than the actual residential recommendation from my report, if the court would be willing to adopt the other recommendations from my final report um, regarding parent, both parties taking a parenting class, um, either party able to request a UA from the other party in the appropriate language for that, and that both parents take steps to uh, assure the children's attendance at school. Okay. I did already look up on your guys' site when I was looking up which courtroom court was today. It popped up different parenting classes that are available. Um, and Chris and I have both discussed that, trying to work together to find one that will be suitable for our schedules with working and parenting the children and their schedules. And um, I don't have any disagreement with the UA part of it at all. Okay. And what about the school school provision? Um, I, I got agree. those printed out as well and turned those in with the parenting plan. Um, they are doing a lot better um, with both attendance and with their grades um, because they're able to get more one-on-one -on -one help. Um, and also I was able to get the children their own alarm clocks at my house. And so that seems to help a lot better as well, too. Okay, so then, if I'm hearing you correctly, Ms. Pearson, you don't, you don't have any objections to those uh, those three items being included in the parenting plan that you've pr presented today. Absolutely not. We'll hear from Mr. Zimmerman. Um, the only issue I have is I, I it's just going to have to be finding uh, a parenting class that I'd be able to do um, on the weekends on my days off because during the week I can't even schedule doctor's appointments for myself. I'm on call. I work, uh, I work all day <laughs> and sometimes all throughout the night, depending on when they call me, I'm, I transport railroad workers for a living um, to and from their, their trains. And so they call me any time of day or night. So trying to schedule something is next to impossible, but if we can find a parenting class, on the weekends, I am absolutely all for all of it. So, okay. I I have uh, some parenting classes that are done online that might be okay. a good choice for you. Awesome. Yeah, I was also informed as well and was looking into it over here um, at which online courses are available. And I was going to get back to them too. But if you're able to help with that, that would be amazing and take a little bit off my plate. <laughs> okay. I'm going to email you guys a link. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, I, I appreciate the the effort um, uh, made by bo both Ms. Fierce and Mr. Zimmerman, uh, you know, in large part, setting aside any any uh, differences between themselves to focus on the well-being of your children. That's 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 beautiful. That's really that really speaks well of you both. And 
obviously a benefit to your children. So thank you. Um, I'll, I'll sign off on the, the parenting plan. I will add the um, provisions related to the parenting class for both and the UA provision. I'll include that then also the school attendance uh, provision uh, as laid out in Ms. Ms. Corey's uh, recommendation section. So I'll just add those and then I'll get that filed and then the, the parties can get a copy of that for your records. Okay, thank you so much. All right, that will conclude the, the matter for today. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day.